वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मृणमय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कंपेटिव इंडियन लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अ मॉड्यूल फ्रॉम लिटरेरी ट्रांसलेशन इन इंडिया कोर्स एंड द टाइटल ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इज रोल ऑफ इंग्लिश इन द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ इंडियन लिटरेचर ट्रांसलेशन इन इंडिया Uh, the content of this module is written by Mr. Shila Ditto Bhattacharjo, Assistant Professor, GCI University, Mathura. India is a multilingual country having an officially recognized number of 23 languages. The reality behind this official recognition is forced upon certain other realities, which tend to disagree with the official numbers. In some surveys, uh, like that of the People's Linguistic Survey of India in 2012, the actual number adds up to 780. Such prolific findings pose important questions. These questions concern the nature of the officialness of the status of scheduled languages. Further, the question extends to the owing practice of linguicism or linguistic imperialism. The world is already dominated by a few chosen languages, be it the field of commerce, literature, law or others. English is not an Indian language in the sense that it never owed its origin to the Indian peninsula. Yet, even after 69 years of official independence, the language of the colonial oppressor still enjoys the status as one of the official languages. Howsoever, owing the situation might be for a strict nationalist, regionalist agenda, the impact of English in India is undeniable. There is a history to it that goes back to 1835, when with the official recognition, the proposal made in the infamous minutes of T. B. Macaulay, the fate of the nation was sealed without discrimination. The elimination of Farsi or Persian as the official language and the introduction of a complete foreign tongue of English, though initially perplexed, the nation was later utilized heavily for the purpose of critical evaluation of the system, rediscovering the Indian heritage and introducing it to the people of the world and finally to retaliate. The language has brought into this land the new ideas of the West in politics, philosophy and literature and obviously science and along with it the Western rationalism. At the same time, it constituted new standards of living, defined high culture and elitism in new terms, gave a proper shape to the already existing class and caste discrimination to a level such that social and economic groups felt the need to identify themselves according to the same lines. English restructured the institutions and introduced the concept of the rule of law, which in effect served to the advantages the high and mighty only adding to the misery of the common folk. However, the aim of the module is not to evaluate the complete impact of English language. We will consider the nature, features and impact of translation in English language. It will consist both translations from English to Indian languages, translations in English of the literature and text of various European languages as well as translation of the Indian languages into English. The need of translation. Before we set on our path, let us discuss the impact of translation in general. Translation is a window of opportunity for cultural exchange. People migrate from one geographical location to another for reasons mostly materialistic in nature. With them, they carry a complex cultural system encoded in language, customs and rituals, music, clothes, foods, etc. In the new lands, after the initial hesitation, the culture exchange begins to happen. 
the migrating group blends in the population by accepting cultural and social norms of the new communities while the original residents coming in contact a new culture learns to evaluate their own in the light of it that is how a cultural assimilation begins affecting the communities in both ways negative and positive new linguistic expressions are born and nurtured which affect the languages of the place in many ways social intermingling gives rise to new standards discourses on different components of life this is obviously a simplified rendition of an actual cultural assimilation process which involves power struggles politicization of identities dominance of language and races leading ultimately to imagined nation buildings but for a while let us believe that such rosy possibilities can be validated at least in a hypothetical world then we would argue that the whole process goes through a vigorous translation activity in fact translation can transmit cultural codes from one language to other thereby affecting the target cultures without actual migration happening dyson in 2009 has put importance on translation in this following manner i quote first let me say to you that i really believe that literary translation is eminently worthy of celebration without it we would be imprisoned in a monocultural world knowing neither our own ancient heritage not the heritage ancient or modern of other culture near or far without translation we cannot understand the cultures of either our nearby neighbors or of our far flung neighbors thousands of miles away this concept of far flung neighbors is very important to me as i think of the world as a community of neighbors continuous in space and time the rich diversity of this human community cannot be appreciated or even understood without the essential tool of translation in its multilingual multicultural nature the indian subcontinent is a microcosm of the whole world and translation should play an important role in the literary life of this country as it should the wider global arena dyson i unquote this is even true for not so for neighbors also consider the indian subcontinent and the existence of innumerable cultural groups within it if asked one can hardly give a comprehensive account of the languages spoken in the land let alone the cultures our collective ignorance has caused many a rift firstly it has caused the difference between the prominent and the incognito secondly the lack of awareness has re resulted in generating bias stereotypes about other cultures and in their turn these have created bigotry and an undermining of the ones we know nothing about the current debate around the issue of general intolerance about views and customs of the other must have some root in this ignorance of other cultures such ignorance gives wrongly as uniquely monolingual and monocultural ignorance of such type gives birth to racial and cultural supremacy which today is a common malady both inside the country and abroad in engaging with the active translation process uh, we can have a therapeutic effect for such cases as the person involved in the process of translation whether as a reader or a translator could educate herself or himself about others translation does enlightens broadens the mind prompts one to be tolerant and be fascinated about the unknown so translation from this angle is a necessary component of modern life dominated by virtual than a proximal existence which is a boom which is a boon in a in a sarcastic manner of the computer based technological proliferations now let us talk about english and translation in india 
there are uh, uh, different different views among various scholars in the field some obviously point out to the progress made due to translation process that began with the like of william jones the argument is that the translation introduced the much cherished and a rich literary heritage of the indian culture to the world jones's attempt to translate shakuntala by kalidasa and manuz dharmashastra enabled the european world that there is much to know about india than it was already known some scholars argue that such attempts help to reduce the stereotypical idea of india to the to the then world along with came the initiative of learning the classical language especially sanskrit pali prakrit in order to be able to read indian literature of the classical ages in its own metaphors this was the time of indology and scholars like max muller etc became prominent in their efforts to reintroduce india to the european public some commentary on sir william jones effect might not be incongruous his works were carefully studied by the written of the age by the writers of the age especially the germans goethe harder and others as soon as jones new writings reached europe the shorter pieces were eagerly picked up and reprinted immediately by different periodicals his translation of kalidasa's shakuntala went through successive reprints george foster's famous german translation of the translation came out in 1791 after which the play was translated into other european languages as well as a 20th century scholar puts it it is not an exaggeration to say that he altered our whole conception of the eastern world if we are compiling a thesis on the influence of jones we could collect most of our material from footnotes uh, ranging from given to tennyson unquote Twelve evidence for Jones' lasting impact on generation of scholars' writings about India can be found even in the preface of the 1984 Indian edition of his Discourse and Essays, where the editor Moni Bagchi indicates that Indians should try to preserve accurately and interpret the national heritage by treading the path chalked out by Sir William Jones, stated by. Tejashini Niranjana 1994 English translation in India to and from the positive active uh, aspect of it among the translators there were several indian scholars of prominence were rajaraman roy ramesh chandra dutt among others these people being the representative of the academic elite could well access the european education and english language ramon himself was a prolific reader of religious text in latin arabic persian sanskrit as well as english the enlightened bunch of academic elite started translation from these sources into indian languages in order for the educated indians to know beyond what the english rulers intended them to know but this profession of translation was ingrained in indian lives from a long time k sachidanandan argues that indian life could be estimated in such terms it is well known that indian has translating consciousness and we keep translating every moment of our active lives it is difficult to come across monolingual in our country at least it was until english medium education began to weaken gradually and destroy our command over our mother tongue we also mix languages almost unconsciously in our everyday speech indian literature is founded on direct or free translation since the various ramayana mahabharata and bhagavatas in different languages including tribal and folk versions and performative improvisations have been a very foundation of our rich literature even the distinction between an original in india's pre-colonial literary discourse the ramayana of pampa kamban ajithanchan 
Tulsidas or Madhava Kandali, for example, were taken to be neither translation nor even adaptation, but considered original work as they were the most brilliant manifestations of the genius of their respective language." Unquote. Similar arguments are made by Indranath Choudhury in many of his papers where he claims that the Indian literary tradition is stepped into the practice of Anuvada. The tradition incorporates the prompt the author to go for translation of text, though he argues that these translations are not in line with the Western tradition of finding the absolute equivalent expression in another language, rather the Indian tradition promoted a relatively free translation practice keeping divergence at an comfortable level. The Dark Side of the Moon By the side of such positive ascriptions on English translation, resides other views too. A whole set of scholars uh, do not accept the legitimacy of such positiveness. Rather, they argue over the fact that English translations of Indian text and vice versa are politically motivated conscious decision by the colonial rulers and their think tanks. Perhaps it will be congruent to remind ourselves that the introduction of English education was not meant to open a space for discourse of scholarship and cultural exchange. Its sole purpose, like that of the Indian railways, was to enable the swiftness of the act of governing the other's business in one word. T. B. Macaulay is remembered to have mentioned that a single shelf of Western literature possesses more material of taste and meaning to him than the whole tradition of Indian literature and Arabian literature of few thousands years. This is not only points at the stupendous lack of understanding and empathy, but also is a mark of a bullying, condescending attitude, which was the hallmark of the majority of colonial executives and elites that point in time. As the historian Ranajit Goh suggests, English did not owe its importance as an emblem of power within the education system to official sponsorship alone. English becomes a mark of status through a complex production of the colonial subject within multiple discourses and on multiple sites. One such site is translation. Quoted from Tejaswini Niranjana, 1994. In the same paper, Niranjana notes the dominating role played by translation activities in colonial India. Translation functions as a transparent presentation of something that already exists. Although the original is actually brought into being through translation, by implying that a representation is adequate to a pre-given reality that which is historical is made natural. Paradoxically, translation also provides a place in history for the colonized. The Hegelian conception of history that translation helps bring into being endorse a teleological hierarchical model of civilizations based on the coming to consciousness of spirit, an event for which the non-Western cultures are unsuited and unprepared. Translation is thus deployed in different kinds of discourses, philosophy, historiography, education, missionary writing, travel writing, to renew and perpetuate colonial domination. No matter how different scholars might opine, the effect of English is still discernible. It has influenced the scholarship in such a way that paved the path for independence. Translation has also helped the formation of movements cutting across languages. First, it was the translation of works from abroad. We are aware how Tolstoy's translation were a major influence on Mahatma Gandhi's ethical thinking. Translations of the works of the early leaders of the freedom struggle and of independent India 
such as Jawaharlal Nehru and B. R. Ambedkar were also impacted by egalitarian Western thoughts and ideas received through original works as well as translations. Later translations of the works of these and other leaders played a major role in bringing the Indian people together on the common platform of the Indian freedom struggle. This was also a period of translations of literature, the works of Tagore, Tara Shankar, Sharat Chandra, Subramaniam Bharati, Sumitra Nandan Pant, Bhallathol, Kesab Sut, Gulam Mahazur, Abdul Rahman Rahi, Prem Chand, Bashir and a host of other patriotic writers got translated into many Indian languages and helped consolidate the patriotic and anti-colonial feelings among our people and garner support for social reform. It has uh, greatly affected the Indian education system since so much so that we have forgotten to update it in this age of lightning fast information. English still thrives as a means of communication and thereby facilitating its own vocabulary system by feeding from the multilingual Indian situation. It has prompted linguicism, linguistics discrimination in one hand. On the other, it has provided the tool to fight that within its own sphere. Now let us summarize the whole discussion. In the end, we can say that we have roughly dealt upon the points of necessity of translation. In the beginning, and discovered that translation is a medium of cultural transmission. It can be cured to many maladies like racial or linguistic supremacy as it enlightens those who practice it. We have also come to know that the, the Indian literary tradition, translation has always been an integral, essential, though with some deviation from the Western standards. English translation of Indian text has changed the world's view about India as well as philosophically. It gave the history a mere teleological dimension. The harbinger of new philosophy and scientific rationality has completely ignored the rich variety of a pluralistic, plurilingual society like India and rendered only a colonial or European version of India's past, present and future. On the other hand, it provided the tools for subversion, connected cultures within the Indian peninsula. The effect of English in translation in India is then concluded to be a multifaceted one with both sides of the coin affecting the people of India and abroad in all possible manner. And in this discussion, we have tried to give a scenario of translation into English or from English which have been happening since the colonial period. And we tried to find out the role of English in Indian translation business, in the structure of Indian translation from different aspects, from different perspectives. We have um, discussed different point of views, different arguments about the translation related with English and Indian translation practice. We also argued that how translation can be emerged or can be observed or used as means of power, means of ethics, means of morality to those who practice the translation. One side, English oppress the communication between one Indian language to another and other side, English gives the power to the marginal languages, even to the scheduled languages of India. 
this is how there always will be debate in 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 the arena of indian translation that what is the role of english is this positive or negative and certainly answer cannot be said or answer cannot be given in a word yes or no it's always matter of debate but the role of english in indian literary translation always is active and always under the limelight and it has its effect in both way thank you